Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers veering in lane, frisks, and the right to film, and is brought to us by Truth Be Told Audits' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On October 7th, 2023, civil rights activist and auditor Daniel Tullis was pulled over by Officer Jonah DeBoard of the Denham Springs Police Department in Denham Springs, Louisiana. Mr. Tullis began to film the traffic stop, and the interaction was also captured on Officer DeBoard body camera. Hey, sir, you do me a favor, step to the front of my uniform. Tell me what you pull me over for. Do me a favor, stand in front of my unit, please. Uh, I can stand where I want. You can tell me what you pulled me over for. Okay, so for my safety, I want you to stay in front of my unit. And for auditor safety, I would like for you to tell me why you stopped me. So Who will, are you? I, I will in just Who a second. Hey, man, stand in front of my unit. I can stand where I want, dude. Not what on my traffic problem? stop. Not on my traffic stop. What do you want? What did you pull me over Do me for? a favor. You can put the cell phone down. No, I can hold my cell phone. When it interferes with a... It, it's not interfering. Recording. It is. Turner it versus is. Driver says it is not interfering. Louisiana, Texas, and Mississippi, as Turner versus Driver, have every right to film y'all. What did you pull me over for? So the reason why I stopped, I noticed you were veering back and forth. Oh, don't give me that. It's all on dash cam. Are you going to let me explain, or are you going to keep bumping your gun? I'm going to keep bumping my guns, because I have every right to Got your ID on you? What do I need to get my ID for? Improper, what law did I break? Improper lanes. Improper lanes? I was in my lane. I got dash cam to prove it. I never broke line either side. You don't have to break line. Statute Dude, I says anything. veering back and forth is improper veering lanes. Back, I was not veering back and forth. This ain't the courtroom. I see you driver's license. This is, this is not the courtroom? Nope. Officer DeBoard states that he pulled Mr. Tullis over for quote-unquote improper lane use for veering back and forth within his lane. And Mr. Tullis argues that he did not break the law because he did not break the lane lines. As the Supreme Court explained in the 1996 case of Wren versus United States, quote, As a general matter, the decision to stop an automobile is reasonable where the police have probable cause to believe that a traffic violation has occurred. Under Section 79 of Title 32 of the Louisiana Statutes, quote, Whenever any roadway has been divided into two or more clearly mark lanes for traffic, a vehicle shall be driven as nearly as practicable entirely within a single lane, and shall not be moved from such lane until the driver has first ascertained that such movement can be made with safety. Courts that have reviewed this issue have typically found that probable cause for a traffic stop exists when a driver sways within their own lane to the extent that their vehicle touches a lane marking line. For instance, in the 2001 case of State v. Waters, the Supreme Court of Louisiana determined that officers had probable cause to initiate a traffic stop for a violation of this statute when a vehicle, quote, veered in its lane for no apparent reason and made contact with the right-hand fog line. Noting that, now quoting again, in Louisiana, as in other jurisdictions, a car which partially leaves its lane of travel and crosses the fog line either at the center of a divided highway or on the right-hand shoulder of the road provides the police with probable cause to believe that a traffic violation for improper lane use has occurred. Similarly, the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Louisiana held in the 2019 case of U.S. versus Jerry that an officer had probable cause to believe an improper lane use violation had occurred once he observed the vehicle weave within its lane and touch the fog line. And in the 2020 case of U.S. versus Pierre, the same court concluded that a traffic stop was justified when a driver was, now quoting, drifting left and right to the extent that his tires would touch the lane markers on either side. Accordingly, even if Mr. Tullis was actually veering back and forth within his lane, as Officer DeBoard claimed, and Officer DeBoard later admitted that he only saw him veer once, it is unlikely that a court would determine that the traffic stop was valid unless his vehicle swerved to the point that it touched the lane lines on the road. This is not the so, 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 so you're pulling me over saying that what? I'm May drunk? I see your driver's license? You're saying that I'm drunk? I'm not. Are you okay. having a medical episode? Are you distracted? Are you tired? Have you been driving for a long time? I don't answer questions. How about that? Okay. I'll take a look at your driver's license, please. Okay. Who are you, Denim Springs? I told you my name is Officer DeBoard, Denim Springs Police Department. Okay, and you're going to be one of the slow ones that just messed up. Now, what else do you want? Y'all are harassing me because of who I am. I don't know who you are. Well, I'm telling you, I am your worst nightmare at this point. If you say that again, I'm going to take that as a threat. It's called freedom of speech. I will, learn, I see, will you take better that, learn the law. I will learn take law, that as a threat and act what? accordingly. How, how is it threat? What you mean by oh, oh, man, wait, you're going to let this fool do this stupid Sunday. Really? You know I don't do nothing wrong. I don't break laws. You know, I was just going to let you off with a warrant, but now I'm going to write you a ticket. For what? Improper lane usage. You're going to get Write a me a ticket. Write me the ticket. Go ahead. Go write me the ticket. Go on. Stand right there. Actually, got any weapons on you? 
Turn around and face my unit. I don't answer questions. And this is going to be an illegal search. Turn around and face my unit. Really? Place your hands on top of you and interlace your fingers. I am recording you. Oh, oh, okay. You see these people? Now, spread your feet. Now it's an all for safety thing. You need to learn the law. So right now, I'm going to be quiet. Shut your mouth! So I can conduct a lawful pat frisk for weapons yes, for officer called, safety. It's called Terry versus And Ohio. I gave you three lawful commands and you sat there. You got one time. Yep, and you just messed up. A nice, interesting weapon. I don't have to answer your questions. You I'm not asking you no questions. You asked me about it. You got the right to remain silent. Use it. Be quiet. I don't have to answer you. Then use it. Officer DeBoard pats down Mr. Tullis, asserting that he has the authority to frisk him for weapons for quote-unquote officer safety, and Mr. Tullis claims that it is an unlawful search. In the landmark 1968 case of Terry v. Ohio, the Supreme Court held that officers may briefly detain individuals for investigatory purposes based on reasonable suspicion that they are involved in criminal activity. As part of this so-called Terry stop, the court also concluded that, now quoting, there must be a narrowly drawn authority to permit a reasonable search for weapons for the protection of the police officer, where he has reason to believe that he is dealing with an armed and dangerous individual. The court went on to clarify that, quote, the officer need not be absolutely certain that the individual is armed. The issue is whether a reasonably prudent man in the circumstances would be warranted in the belief that his safety or that of others was in danger. And in determining whether the officer acted reasonably in such circumstances, due weight must be given, not to his inchoate and unparticularized suspicion or hunch, but to the specific reasonable inferences which he is entitled to draw from the facts in light of his experience. The Supreme Court later applied this standard in the 1977 case of Pennsylvania v. Mims, where it determined that an officer was justified in not only ordering a driver to step out of his vehicle during a traffic stop, but also in frisking him once he observed a bulge in his jacket. However, as the Supreme Court of Louisiana explained in the 1979 case of State v. Hunter, quote, While it is true that an officer is never justified in conducting a pat-down for weapons unless the original detention itself was justified, a lawful detention for questioning does not necessarily give the officer the authority to conduct a pat-down for weapons. Even after a lawful investigatory stop, a police officer is justified in frisking the subject only under circumstances where a reasonably prudent man would be warranted in the belief that his safety or that of others was in danger. Ultimately, the court in the Hunter case concluded that a weapon search was unlawful when the officers could not point to any particular particular facts from which it could be reasonably inferred that the individual frist was armed and dangerous. In this instance, although Officer DeBoard claims that Mr. Tullis failed to comply with his quote-unquote lawful commands, presumably referring to his orders that Mr. Tullis stand in front of his vehicle, the body camera footage shows that although Mr. Tullis pushed back verbally, he did actually comply and stood in front of the vehicle once Officer DeBoard ordered him to do so. Further, even if Mr. Tullis had failed to comply with this order, it is unclear how that fact alone would give Officer DeBoard reason to believe that he was quote-unquote armed and dangerous, and there do not appear to be any facts that would cause a reasonable officer to believe that his safety was in danger, as there were no visible bulges in Mr. Tullis's pocket, he made no furtive or aggressive movements or threats, and was only suspected of committing a minor traffic violation. Accordingly, it is probable that a court would conclude that Officer DeBoard's search of Mr. Tullis was unconstitutional. You threatening me again? You, you, are you gonna get it? You're gonna get it written. Hey, that been written you're, up. <laughs> oh, man. You're you don't get, even you're know. Gonna, you're gonna get written up. Ooh. You're gonna get a complaint form. Good. It's gonna go on your jacket. Come on with it. Put the phone down, man. Put the phone down. Go ahead, write me my ticket. So is this one long? Yeah. Yes, you're allowed to get out here. Yeah. I know law better than you. Have y'all dealt with him before? I dealt a couple times, see. But I don't, I don't really, you don't really cause any problems. It's up to you, if you want to write to Well, so I dealt with, with the cell phone thing when it interferes with his investigation. It just, in general, he's still allowed to record. But within a certain distance of a law enforcement officer, they haven't approved that yet. They, they're trying to get that approved. But they haven't I approved have, here when I dealt with it. Well, I have to double check on it. I'm going to do that right now. 
Officer DeBoard's partner, whom Mr. Tullis referred to as Sanjay, informs him that citizens generally have the right to record during a traffic stop. Officer DeBoard responds by referencing potential legislation prohibiting filming within a certain distance of an officer. And Officer Sanjay replies that this restriction was not approved. In the 2017 case of Turner v. Driver, which Mr. Tullis referenced earlier in the interaction, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Louisiana, held unequivocally that the First Amendment protects the right to record the police. In reaching this conclusion, the court noted that, quote, the filming of government officials engaged in their duties in a public place, including police officers performing their responsibilities, fits comfortably within basic First Amendment principles, but also recognize that, now quoting again, filming the police may be subject to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions, which, now quoting again, must be narrowly tailored to serve a significant governmental interest. As an increasing number of jurisdictions have recognized the right to film the police, several states have attempted to legislatively codify restrictions on this right by prohibiting filming or approaching within certain distances of police activity. For instance, in 2022, Arizona legislators passed a new law, which was codified in Section 13-3732 of the revised statutes, making it unlawful for an individual to make a video recording of law enforcement activity within eight feet of where the activity is occurring if the individual receives a verbal warning that they are prohibited from recording and continues to do so. However, a coalition of news organizations and the ACLU of Arizona quickly filed a federal lawsuit arguing that the statute was unconstitutional. And on July 21, 2023, the U.S. District Court for the District of Arizona ruled in the case of Arizona Broadcasters Association v. Mays that the statute violated the First Amendment and permanently prohibited enforcement of the law, in part because it was not narrowly tailored or necessary to prevent interference with police officers given other Arizona laws in effect, and it prohibited or chilled a substantial amount of First Amendment protected activity. Similarly, on April 20, 2023, Indiana passed a law creating Section 35-44.1-2-14 of the Indiana Code, which states that a person who approaches within 25 feet of a law enforcement officer lawfully engaged in the execution of the officer's duties after the officer has ordered the person to stop approaching commits unlawful encroachment on an investigation. On August 8, 2023, the ACLU of Indiana filed a federal lawsuit arguing that the new statute is unconstitutional because it interferes with the First Amendment right to observe and record the police without interfering with their activities. And as of the date of writing this episode, the case of Nicodemus versus City of South Bend is still pending. In Louisiana, the state legislature passed House Bill 85 on June 7th, 2023, which would have enacted Section 109 of Title 14 of the revised statute stating that, now quoting, no person shall knowingly or intentionally approach within 25 feet of a law enforcement officer who is lawfully engaged in the execution of his official duties after the law enforcement officer has ordered the person to stop approaching or to retreat. However, the bill was vetoed by Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards on August 18th, 2023. And in his veto letter explaining the decision, Governor Edwards wrote that, quote, the effect of this bill were it to become law would be to chill exercise of First Amendment rights and prevent bystanders from observing and recording police action. Although the bill was not enacted into law in Louisiana, even if it passed, a court would almost certainly have determined that Mr. Tullis's filming would not have been prohibited, as it was clearly intended to apply to bystanders and not the subjects of traffic stops, who by necessity would need to remain within 25 feet of the officers conducting the stop. Be quiet. If you step any closer to me, stand right over there. If you step one more foot closer to my unit, I'm going to take it as a threat and I'm going to act accordingly. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm just a backup officer, bud. I know. I wasn't going to write him a ticket. Also, people knew for sure that he was there. Not trying to dumb questions. So, I know he was there. That's how that walk got in trouble. Because they do have dash cameras. Well, I know. So, I noticed he he veered to the the, uh, center lane to travel right before he crossed over the. um, 
the intersection. But after that, he didn't appear. After deciding to give Mr. Tullis a quote-unquote warning, Officer DeBoard allowed him to leave and terminated the traffic stop. Mr. Tullis shared his recording of the encounter on his YouTube channel, and later obtained this body camera footage and posted it as well. But it's unclear if he's filed a complaint or is pursuing any sort of legal action. Overall, Officer DeBoard gets an F for interfering with Mr. Tullis' First Amendment rights by ordering him to stop filming multiple times, violating his Fourth Amendment rights by frisking him without any evidence supporting a belief that he was quote-unquote armed and dangerous, and demonstrating an alarming lack of knowledge about the Constitution and the current state of Louisiana law. Officer DeBoard also changed his story regarding the reason for the stop several times, as he originally told Mr. Tullis that he was quote-unquote veering back and forth, but later told Officer Sanjay after after he questioned whether Mr. Tullis was actually swerving, that he saw Mr. Tullis veered to the center lane one time before he crossed over the intersection, and did not veer after that. Although a court would likely uphold the validity of the traffic stop if Mr. Tullis did cross into the center lane even once, Officer DeBoard's demonstrated lack of integrity throughout this encounter leads me to question the truthfulness of this claim, particularly given Officer Sanjay's evident doubts that any veering occurred. Finally, Officer DeBoard also admitted to consistent first Amendment violations, stating that at his previous department, he would confiscate citizens' cell phones when they were recording interactions with him. See, I dealt with this in Point Capi, yeah. and <clears throat> when when they doing when all when all that's going on, when it interferes with a law enforcement investigation, take the phone, turn it off. Throughout the encounter, Officer DeBoard repeatedly referred to concerns about quote-unquote officer safety and interference based solely on Mr. Tullis' exercise of his First Amendment right to record the traffic stop, despite the fact that the act of filming in no way posed any sort of danger to him or interfered with his investigation, making it seem that he was simply attempting to use law enforcement buzzwords to justify his efforts to exercise an overly authoritarian level of control over Mr. Tullis' actions. Officer Sanjay gets a C, because although he demonstrated an accurate understanding of the First Amendment protections granted to Mr. Tullis' filming, and took steps to correct some of Officer DeBoard's unconstitutional behaviors, he was not assertive enough in his correction of Officer DeBoard, and instead stood by while Officer DeBoard unlawfully frisked Mr. Tullis and repeatedly ordered him to stop recording. While Officer Sanjay did not seem enthusiastic about Mr. Tullis' right to record, he understood and acknowledged it, and I applaud him for taking some steps to advise Officer DeBoard to avoid interfering with Mr. Tullis' First Amendment rights. However, Officer Sanjay failed to intervene before Officer DeBoard violated any of Mr. Tullis' rights, and said nothing about the likely unconstitutional frisk Officer DeBoard conducted. In an ideal world, officers would be motivated to respect citizen rights by professionalism and a commitment to the Constitution. But this encounter demonstrates the practical impact that potential lawsuits and complaints can have in deterring officer misconduct in the real world. Mr. Tullis gets an A for demonstrating an accurate understanding of his constitutional rights under the First and Fourth Amendments, ensuring that he did not violate the law throughout the traffic stop, and taking steps to pursue officer accountability. Although Mr. Tullis could have exercised his right to remain silent more effectively, he did not admit to anything incriminating, and exercised his First Amendment rights by both filming the encounter and expressing his disagreement with the officer's actions. Mr. Tullis also complied with the directives that that a court would likely find to be lawful, such as Officer DeBoard's orders that he stand in front of the police vehicle during the traffic stop, while ignoring Officer DeBoard's blatantly unconstitutional commands that he put his phone down and stop recording. Given Officer DeBoard's demonstrated lack of knowledge regarding the constitutional protections given to filming police encounters, it is not outside the realm of possibility that Officer DeBoard could have wrongfully arrested him for refusing his orders to put his phone away, and I commend Mr. Tullis for this high level of commitment to his constitutional rights. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.